Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on understanding the interquartile range and using it to detect outliers. In this example, I'll be using Microsoft Excel, and I have two variables here in columns A and B. I have an anxiety variable. Let's assume these scores came from a psychometric instrument designed to measure anxiety. And then I have a depression variable. And we'll assume these scores came from an instrument designed to measure depression. I have 50 values in each variable, and I want to use the interquartile range to detect outliers in both these variables. So moving over here to column D, we can see that I have labels for statistics already entered. I have minimum through maximum, and this is what I'm going to calculate first, and I'm going to calculate it for the anxiety variable. I'll be using the quartile.inc function, so it's going to be equal sign quartile.inc. It has two arguments, array and quartile. So array is going to be A2 through A51. It's going to contain all the scores in the anxiety variable. And then moving to the next argument, quartile, you can see that these values correspond to the labels I have here on the left. Minimum value all the way through maximum value. So for minimum value, the argument would be zero. I'm going to be autofilling this down for the anxiety variable. And at some point, I'm going to want to autofill it to the right. I'm going to make the rows absolute in this reference. So before the two, I'm going to put a dollar sign. And again, before the 51, a dollar sign. Hit enter. And I'm going to autofill this down and change the second argument, the quartile, to correspond to the label. So first I'll autofill this. Then for quartile 1, I'll change the 0 to a 1. For quartile 2, or the median, I'll change the 0 to a 2. Quartile 3, the quartile will be changed to a 3. And then the maximum value will be changed to a 4. So I have a minimum score in this variable of 20, a maximum of 80. Quartile 1 is 43, quartile 3 is 57, and the median is 50. I can autofill this to the right, and I have the statistics here for depression. And notice they are a little different. 23 minimum, quartile 1, 44, median is 51, quartile 3, 59, and the maximum 74. Next, I want to calculate the mean for both the anxiety variable and the depression variable. This is going to be equal sign and average. And again, for the anxiety variable A2 through A51. And we can see the mean is 51.42. So a median of 50 and a mean of 51.42. Autofilling this to the right. For depression, the mean is 50.44. Again, the median here, 51. Next, I'll calculate the range. The range is going to be equal to the maximum value minus the minimum value. So equal sign, cell E7, and I'll subtract cell E3. So we have a range of 60 for the anxiety variable and a range of 51 for the depression variable. Now moving to the interquartile range. The interquartile range is equal to quartile 3 minus quartile 1. So this will be equal sign and cell E6. And I'll subtract cell E4. The interquartile range for this anxiety variable is 14. Again, autofilling to the right. For depression, it's 15. Next, I want to multiply the interquartile range by 1.5. So this will be equal sign interquartile range times 1.5. That's 21. And again, autofilling, 22.5 for depression. So next, I'm going to establish the lower limit and upper limit for both the anxiety and depression variables. This lower limit will represent the lowest value that we can have that will not be considered an outlier. And similarly, the upper limit will be the highest value that will not be considered an outlier for this variable. 
the lower limit is going to be equal to this interquartile range times 1.5 value, this 21, subtracted from quartile 1. So the equal sign, quartile 1 minus interquartile range times 1.5, that value 21. So the lower limit is 22. The upper limit will be where I add 21 to 57, which is quartile 3. So this is equal sign, quartile 3, plus 21, this interquartile range times 1.5 value. That gives us 78. So the lower limit for anxiety, 22. The upper limit, 78. Anything that falls Within these limits is not considered an outlier. A value below 22 would be an outlier, and a value above 78 would also be an outlier. So again, I'll autofill these to the right. And for the depression variable, 21.5 lower limit, and 81.5 for the upper limit. So taking a look at this box plot, I have here to the right, the colors correspond to the variables that matches the color scheme used in the rest of the worksheet. And we can see this first box plot for anxiety. We have a value plotted above the top whisker, a value pl plotted below the bottom whisker, and several values plotted between this upper whisker and the lower whisker. So starting at the top, this value plotted above the, the upper whisker, it's 80. That is greater than the upper limit for this variable, which is 78, so it's plotted above that whisker. It's an outlier. The value of the whisker itself, you can see here, is 78. Now that happens to correspond to the upper limit, but the reason this value is plotted this way is because it's the highest value in this variable that's not an outlier. Moving down to the top of the rectangle, this represents quartile 3. This value 57 is quartile 3. This line separating the rectangle is the median, which for the anxiety variable is 50. And this lower bound of the rectangle is 43. It's quartile 1. So the interquartile range are the values in this rectangle. 57 minus 43, which is 14. Then moving down to the lower whisker, we can see the value here is 30. That's the lowest value in this variable anxiety that's not an outlier. And notice in this case, it does not match the lower limit of this variable. And then moving down to this point plotted below the lower whisker, value 20 is below 22, so it is an outlier. X that's plotted here above the median is the mean. In this case, 51.42. Moving over here to the depression variable, you can see that the upper whisker here is 74, which is the maximum value in this variable. The lower whisker is 23, which is the minimum value. So all the scores are between the upper and lower whiskers in this box plot. So there are no outliers in the depression variable. And again here we have the interquartile range, this time in purple, the purple rectangle. The vertical line that's dividing the rectangle is the median. In this case it's 51. You can see the X is right below the median because the mean is lower, it's 50.44. And the top of the rectangle here, quartile 3, 59. And the bottom, quartile 1, 44. And that gives us the interquartile range of 15. I hope you found this video on understanding the interquartile range to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me, and I'll be happy to assist you.